Well, greetings today, everyone. I have a very special YouTube message for you, and it's a very simple title, Explaining My Strange Visions. Most of you know that sometime back, before Russia invaded the Ukraine, I wrote a book called The Visions, and it was a series of visions that my father had had uh, over the years, and a series of visions that I had had that had been placed in a journal. Uh, when I would have these visions, I would get up at night and I would go into a small office at the house. Many times they, it, I was at the house when, when, when they happened. And I would begin to write down either on a piece of paper that I later kept in a file or in this journal some of the details of what I was experiencing at that time. Now, for those of you that read the book, and many of you did, and of course, if you do not have the book, I encourage you just to contact our office, Voice of Evangelism here in Cleveland, Tennessee, and to get that book ordered so that you can read everything that's in it. You need to read it in its context and in its setting. Now, let me go back and talk about visions and dreams. In Joel chapter 2 and Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit indicated that in the last days when the Holy Spirit is poured out, that there would, the outpouring would be accompanied by dreams and visions. Young men would see visions, old men would dream dreams. Now, I will tell you that most of the visions that I had came to me before I was 50 years of age, or let's say 55 and, and less. Now, I'm not saying that when you get over 55, you're an old man, but I will tell you I'm 63 years of age, and now I don't have as many visions. Uh, I do occasionally, but I have mostly spiritual dreams. And in a spiritual dream, there will be a lot of symbolism that is found in the Bible connected to the dream that will help you to interpret what that particular dream means. Uh, I know over the past several years, I have dreamed of people. And what is odd is many times when you will dream of people, if the individuals are somehow working against your ministry or against you personally, you will see them in the form of animals. I have seen snakes and piranha and alligator, alligators, and all of these have one thing in common, the mouth. The mouth of an alligator is dangerous. The mouth of piranha, they go after blood. The mouth of a snake is, uh, the poison is in the mouth of the snake. And so I knew over the years when I had these dreams, I knew, uh, and, and to be quite honest with you, I knew many times who the individuals were, and I won't go into that, but I, I, they, God would show me the intent of the person. I've had dreams of, of, of dogs that were very angry and vicious, of a bear that was attacking. And uh, in reality, these ended up being individuals over, you know, been ministering for 46 years over ministry. And God was giving me a warning. Anytime you dream, for example, of a storm, it can be literal or it can be a spiritual storm of some type. And uh, one of the things I've dreamed a lot of, and you can kind of see that this is from the cover of my book. You see a car, and let me move here. You see these two people running, and a wave is coming in. And one of the things that's been very, very, very consistent in, uh, in my visions and dreams are tsunamis. And I can't even tell you the number of times that either a dream or a vision has occurred that is connected to a tsunami. Now, someone says, could it be a spiritual tsunami? And the answer is no, because in a spiritual tsunami, you would see people rejoicing in the water or praying or great cow crowds uh, worshiping. But this is always people who are afraid, buildings being destroyed, cities being ruined and things of that nature. Now, not rehashing any of the dreams, but giving you an explanation that a lot of people ask me about. Anytime I've had any kind of a spiritual dream, people have contacted me or vision and they've said, Perry, when do you think this is going to happen? And the answer is, I cannot remember any vision or dream the Lord ever gave me in which I saw a particular time frame or a date connected to that particular vision. For example, uh, in, the, in, the, in the one that I have, and I've got a picture here of the attack on London, I, I did not see a date on that. On the tsunami dreams over here, or visions, I should say, because both of these were visions, uh, I did not see a date connected to it. Now, I could see a location and I could see the general area where it was coming from, but not a particular date. Now, I know that drives some people absolutely bonkers because uh, it's just like the coming of the Lord for the church. There is no date given because no man knows the day or the hour in which the Lord would come back. And so people often get very frustrated when they say, OK, there's a warning, but what do I do? Now, what you do is this. You have to understand, first of all, uh, let's say when I had the 9-11 dream of the World Trade Center shrouded in black 
and the, and the greatest tornadoes. It was five years later, uh, actually a little over five years later before that particular vision that happened in Brooksville, Florida, actually came to pass. I have to be honest with you. It drove me crazy trying to figure out what in the world that meant. World Trade Center, totally covered in black, grayish tornadoes coming off of it, taking out five rows of corn. All of it was symbolism. But when the 9-11 attack happened, we knew exactly that was the full meaning. And, and we knew the result was going to be the economic uh, downturn that did happen, especially in the area of New York and all those that were connected to, to World Trade. But one of the things you have to keep in mind is the Lord always gives you a gap time. If there is a dream that's a warning or a vision that's a warning, the Lord will give you an extended gap time to do several things. Number one is to pray about it. Number two is share it with others that they may pray. But number three, which is very important, is he gives you time to prepare for what is coming. Let's say Joseph. Joseph was warned that a famine was coming for seven years, so God gave him seven years of plenty. He didn't sit around saying, well, guess what? Famine's coming. He planned during the good time. What you have to do, and Americans are the world's worst at this. They are reactionary. They hear it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. They do nothing, and then it happens, and they all, they're all they going to the grocery store, wiping the grocery store out. They're panicking. They're, you know, they're, 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 they're taking all the fuel from the tanks in the gas station because they're in panic mode. And you cannot, under certain circumstances, wait until panic comes, or you'll be a part of the panic. And this is why if you have a warning that there's going to be some food, uh, th things that you can't get, if you have a warning, for example, there's going to be shortages of medical supplies. I mean, I just read the other day about, and these are professional people who said there's coming a shortage of this, this, and this because of this, this, and this. And they gave the reason why. Okay, I will pay attention to that because this is not some internet guru or, or speculation. These are people who are saying, we work here. Here's what's about to happen. Here's why. So if I need those things then I will focus off of the other stuff I have and go for the things that are needed. So God gives you time to prepare, just like he did with Joseph, just like he did when the children of Israel, uh, I'm sorry, when um, Israel was warned that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, the Christians got out of the city and moved to Pela, which is in Jordan, uh, hours and hours away. And they actually lived there. And when the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, none of the Christians were killed. Uh, in that destruction that had left the city. Now, I'm not telling you you got to leave the city and leave towns, but I'm going to tell you this. There are places, uh, in, even in the United States, that I would not move my family to and I would not live in. Now, would I go evangelize there? Yes. Would I go preach there? Yes. Would I try to win people? Yes. But as far as living and raising my children and grandchildren, it just would never happen because I can foresee too much danger in that area. When Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zebuim, four cities were destroyed, one small city named Zoar, which was, would be considered a rural town, was completely spared and uh, because it was not in the judgment zone and God spared it because of Lot and his two daughters or his family. His, his, actually, his wife went out and she uh, didn't make it out, if you know the story. So in explaining the visions, let me just say God gives them to you in advance. Number two, he gives them to you to pray about. Number three, he gives them to you for other people to pray about. And number four, he gives you time to prepare. Now, when it comes to something, for example, like a tsunami, it's a little difficult to know how to prepare if you're living on the coast. Will it happen here? Could it happen here? Let me just say this. The way the plates of the earth are made in the ocean, a tsunami can happen anywhere at any time if a major earthquake takes place. What you have to do if you live on a coastal area is meet with your family and say, now, in the event that you hear this happened, here's where we go. This is that we go away from the coast. We get in, 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 inland. We go to Aunt so-and-so's house. We've already talked to Bill and them. We can go to their house. Make a plan that your family knows about in the event that something happens. And it's not being afraid. It's not being fearful. It's just being prepared. And I'm going to tell you something. You are not scared if you are prepared, but you can get scared when you are not prepared. And the Bible says, go to the ant and study its way in the winter. Before winter ever comes, it stores up its food. And I know a lot of people don't have the extra income to do what they need to do. But here's the thing. Do whatever you can do based on what the Spirit of God has showed you and do it in advance and take time to do it. You know, get knowledgeable. Um, you just be surprised how much material is out there that can help you get acquainted and get knowledgeable for the things that are out there. Now, the greatest thing I want to conclude with this is to tell you that we know that eventually Christ is coming back again. We know how the whole story ends. 
But we also know what the world goes through to get to that end where the millennial kingdom comes. And so it's, you shouldn't be at dread that you're alive today. You should thank the Lord for being alive in these times. He allowed you to be born when he did. But I would, I would also say, find a good fellowship, find a good church. We have services every Tuesday night at Omega Center International. I don't, I don't preach them. I preach occasionally, but uh, Dr. Brian Cutshaw heads up Ramp OCI here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Every Tuesday night, you can come to these services. Thursday night, World Prayer. We have that beginning at 6 o'clock East Coast time. And so what I'm trying to say is find a fellowship of believers. Get to know people. Get to pray with people. And uh, when, when, when these big conferences come, even if you can come a few nights, get away from all the cares of life and make a trip to be with God's people. Here's what happens. When you go to some of our conferences, we've had couples meet each other that were single that eventually got married. We've had business people meet each other that connected with business. Uh, we've had people uh, uh, to meet to meet just people that they needed to meet that became lifelong friends. And that's why conferences are so important, not just to hear the word of God, but to be a part of what God's doing. And so perrystone.org, keep up with our conferences that we're having, keep up with our schedule of where we're going to be preaching from time to time. We'd love to have you join us and be a part. Uh, I, you know, on, on, on Manifest or on uh, YouTube, I teach, but when I get in church, I do a little bit of preaching teaching. So it's a little bit different, but most people seem to really enjoy it. We hope you can be with us sometime. Now I have a special offer. Keep watching this and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're learning a lot. We have a lot more teaching in the days ahead. Thank you so much. God bless you. Did you know that many people are inheriting their ancestors' demonic attacks? What is the root problem when you can win a public battle but you keep losing your private struggles when no one is watching? How can you drive out of your life spirits of depression and cutting and mental thoughts of suicide? Is there a way to get your mind back when you feel like that you are, as David said, at wit's end? Are there cracks in your faith? Is life full of continual physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual defeats? Folks, I want to teach you how you can learn spiritual warfare strategies from the battle tactics of famous military leaders that when you apply these same strategies, they work in the spirit realm. I will explain how a scandalon is designed to crack and weaken your faith. How will you overcome the biggest test that Satan sends you in your entire life? Discover how you can wear a shield of favor in your daily life. If you feel faint, weak, afraid, or faithless, you absolutely must read my 251-page landmark book, There's a Crack in Your Armor. Instead of losing all the time your spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional battles, go through these 17 detailed chapters loaded with spiritual and practical revelation and get ready to turn the battle forever and move it in your favor. I'm also going to include my two-hour audio CD teaching. I think it's the most important message all year long, what I have learned about spiritual warfare in my lifetime. The Lord impressed me to teach you what the Holy Spirit has taught me for the past 48 months or so and expose Satan's deception and his plots and explain how God's counterattack strategies will work if you apply them. Don't use the wrong weapon for the wrong battle. God has provided all that you need for each battle engagement. The book and CD are now available to the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what denomination you are or if you go to church or not. This is a resource that I think will bless you immensely. The book and the CD are available for your donation of $35 or more. Order by calling 1-888-21-GRIT, or you can go online at perrystone.org and order that way. Or if you would prefer to send it through the mail, you can send a check to Perry Stone Ministries, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. This teaching and instruction is needed right now. I have never seen more people engaging in weird warfare and under mental assaults of the powers of the enemy. Folks, we have the weapons, we have the tools. God has given us the insight, and I wanna take what I've learned, 46 years of ministry, what he has taught me, and get it into your hands to help you be an overcomer. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. 
Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.